All right, we're back. UFLF 1804 episodes. You already know what it is. Um, we got Mike Desir here today. We're over at the MD Fit Life Gym. Go ahead, introduce yourself. Tell them where we're from. You know, where are you from? Where were you born? Where'd you grow up? Yes, boss. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for you know. Welcome. For showing welcome. up. Thanks it's your second home time. or third home. Love, love, <laughs> love, love. Yeah. So uh, I'm from Haiti. Uh, grew up in Haiti. Went to school there in Port Prince. My mom from Jacques Mel, which is one of the most beautiful city in the Caribbean from the south coast of Haiti mm, um, too. you know uh, and then we, I moved here because my sister was already here moved here in Canada in 2003 okay how and old from, were you uh 2003 I was uh <coughs> yeah. around around so, around, around, you know, around, around that community. no I was 18 <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was 17 <laughs> <laughs> I, I was uh, 17, I 18 at that time, okay. and then, uh, yeah, come in, um, since I was in Haiti, I was doing martial arts, and that was my, my background, my first Taekwondo instructor was at, at age 8. Um, okay, they were, they so were that's, the first, that's the first style of fighting you learned? Yes, it was Taekwondo. Okay, how'd you um, get into Taekwondo? Why did you want to start fighting at all? Um, I was I was a hothead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna lie. A lot of like, energy uh, to release. But one other thing is to me personally, and still now I have this. Me, I can't stand bullies. I don't want to use the word hate because that's such, such a strong word. Okay. But like, uh, I can't stand bullies. But me, to me, to see myself being able to, you know, stand up to a bully was always something in front. Of me. Okay. And Were I you ever not, bullied? As a, in someone your, tried someone because tried. Uh, after all, I'm Haitian, so yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's a it. different thing. Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, you know. Not to condone violence, but you know violence exists, so you have to be prepared for it. Okay. So that was my mindset going It was to... more of a protection type of exactly. device. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So, yeah, and then when I came here, you know, I wanted to continue, um, you know, my martial arts. But back then in Haiti, too, I was doing Taekwondo and I moved to Shotokan Karate. Um, and then I did a bit of Kyokushin Karate. And then after that, you know, I moved here. Okay. But I had whole, always had some love for Muay Thai. But, you know, first come to the country, you have to figure yourself out and get yourself together and stuff. And so you're already like three stylings of fighting now. Taekwondo, what's this? Shotokan Karate. Shotokan Karate. These are Japanese Korean. And also, okay. uh, well, uh, Taekwondo is South Korean. It's okay. Korean Karate. Shotokan and uh, Kyokushin are Japanese based Karate. Kyokushin? Kyokushin Karate, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. So, um, a, a little bit. I didn't do that one too much. And then when I moved here, my base, like my thing was uh, boxing and Muay Thai. And okay. I was like really intensively training Muay Thai when I moved here. Um, intensively. And to the point where, you know, um, yeah, it was just consuming me a lot. And consuming I loved it. Your life. <laughs> I, and I loved it. Did you, know, you did you ever fight professionally? I did fight uh, um, an in-house and then uh, a couple of like smokers but like nothing really crazy what does that mean what's a smoker when gyms put stuff together and okay. then go in and then, and then, okay. and then perform because i realized quickly too i don't like fighting mm -hmm. you know, i'm prepared for violence yeah. but i don't like violence okay, okay so to me it's the type of things where okay you can be inflicting pain or you're getting pain but which is to me it can be okay but at the end of the day it's something it's not something i enjoy okay so i was wondering like what your view is on fighting should you be presented by such because you know like we go out you go to the club you yeah. never know what type of situation you got if you're surrounded by hotheads yeah or even one hothead is all it takes right yeah but what would you be your view would you because you know karate i hear like it's like avoid at all costs so but only strike if you're stricken <laughs> you know? <laughs> What's your view so, on fighting, you know? Or do you more it, like a strike first, strike hard? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, man, I, you I know? spent the whole weekend watching Cobra Kai too, so that was like, shit. So, <laughs> there you go. So you know no. exactly who I'm referring to. The know? thing <laughs> is that fighting is necessary. It, 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 it should happen when it's necessary. Mm -hmm. You should always be prepared for violence, as I mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And you make a couple of good points about like you go out there and then you meet a lot of like hot heads. You only take one person to just mm -hmm. like stir the pot, right? Exactly. To me, that's why environment is very big for me. I don't mm -hmm. go out with everybody. I mean, we've been out a couple of times. Exactly. Yeah, I roll, I just yeah. go and then go to my Keep home. Keep family and, around yeah, you. exactly. So you don't put yourself in that no, position. No, no, never. It's not necessary. Yeah. But understand that it exists. I mm -hmm. can be walking outside and while sitting here with you, someone can come in and try some stuff. Yeah. Right? I have to be prepared for that. Fighting to me is something that uh, is the most um, honest way to express yourself. You cannot fake fighting. Mm. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, if you come at me and then you're gonna come and fight me, I can I can pretend that you know I can. You no, know, we're gonna yeah, fight yeah. and you're gonna see the truth. You can't fake because, fight. <laughs> exactly. You cannot <laughs> fake it. Yeah. So to me, it's very necessary to know to have certain combat skills. Mm -hmm. 
to use for good for your family, for for yourself, for your you know your goods, you know, everyday uh, life. These you days, you know, yeah, exactly. The whole world. So because of that, me. But when you do, if, if someone is fighting for them to be a bully just to just for fighting to me. It is what it is. I don't judge anybody, but yeah. at the end of the day, to me, it's something that's necessary. It's a necessary skill, and then it's also very good for um, to learn how to fight because it's the best way to express yourself, to to push yourself. Like you can't fake it, so there's you have to go through the fire no matter what. <laughs> so it's competitively. I think that's one of the best form of comp competition that exists. But um, beside that, like when people say, "Oh, I fight. I want to be this. I want to be that." Here. There's always gonna be someone better than you. Always, <laughs> always, yeah, yeah. Always someone bigger, always someone better, better. like way better. <laughs> yeah. So, if, so should you happen get in a fight? What would you, what would you be your your go-to strike? My go-to strike. <laughs> should you happen to have to throw something? <laughs> Would it be a kick? Would it be a jab? Would it be a, you know, you know what would you go with? You read your opponents, right? Okay. You know, if they're high guard, like their hands are up, Good grab answer. the leg, you know, if they're, you, you never know. You never know what's just going to be. When the situation comes, yeah. one thing I can tell everybody, get get ready for whatever it is. I like that. Because like, you know, sometimes, you know, some guys are like, if I find a 300 mountain, 300 yeah, mountain event, exactly. I'm not going to stand up and strike with you. I'm yeah. not crazy. You better have a different <laughs> yeah, strategy exactly. than a little exactly, bit. Exactly, right? Exactly. Um, but again, it, it depends. If someone pull out a gun, mm -hmm. the smartest, um, smartest way if I can run away, run away. Run I'm away. Not gonna, Avoid. I'm, I'm not in a movie here. Yeah. Run that movie. This is real life. Exactly. It's real life, right? Exactly. And uh, and sometimes the smartest, the less cowardice way of fighting is to go into your um, your car, lock your door, roll your window because That's you know it. what? Your children are there, your family is there, your wife is there, mm -hmm. and then guess what? I'm not gonna. Jeopardize. Put myself jeopardize anything like that. The smartest way of fighting, yeah. sometimes. So again, it's whatever the, the opponent bring you, and then you should be prepared for that and read the situation uh, accordingly. Accordingly, I like that. I like yeah, that. Yeah. So why MD Fit Life? Why did you start a gym? Being a student yourself of so many different styles of fighting. So that's why I was going to earlier because, mm -hmm. like, I realized I don't like fighting, but I love coaching. Mm -hmm. um, and I got my first taste of coaching after high school. One of the coaches, uh, my soccer coach, my football coach. Um, he's like, uh, hey, you want to act like, I just like the way, literally I was 18, mm -hmm. two years, in, a year and a half in the country. And then he's like, uh, I want you to come and help me coach. And I and I was looking at the soccer team and then they were, we were coaching and I, I was assisting him pretty much. Okay, okay. And we went to a, the Tournoi Franco Montavier, it's like all the French high schools, they, they go to a city and play soccer for mm -hmm. this big tournament in the, in the spring. So, Monsieur Marc Sarazen, as his name, my teacher. Okay, and then, okay. Name that, still ring bells? <laughs> you know, okay. No, it's great. I yeah, still yeah. keep in contact with him because that's one thing that really, I, when I'm looking back, it really changed my life because I, I know how I felt. So what ended up happening, and we have the girls' teams and the boys' teams. So um, that year, the girls' team had to play to a field way far to the, the uh, way further than where the boys were playing. Okay. So when we realized that they were playing at the same time in the first. Um, a match is like, hey man, I have to be with the girl. Mm -hmm. Again, I was assisting throughout the whole yeah. camp. Okay. And it's like, you with the boys. <laughs> and then mean, I'm, I'm taking up. You I'm went like, from um, assistant to general <laughs> I'm like, manager. sir, uh, he's like, hey, yeah. just take care of the boys. You got this. I'm out. And you get on the bus and took off. And I'm realizing, like, okay, are these boys gonna respect me? Mm -hmm. they gonna are they gonna to listen? Me? Yeah. Some of them I was playing with last year. Mm -hmm. They were, I was in 12th grade, they were in 11th yeah. grade. And I was now they're in the ball. I was like, it's like, no, I'm telling you. And then, um, they responded well. The, the attitude was great, and I was on fire about it. And I was yeah. just like, you know, I didn't come up as a, you know, bully. I was just like really, I was. I realized I could assess things and then like give them good direction, and yeah. they really respected that. And I re that's when I first got my my uh, my love for coaching. Yeah. And then we won. We gave that school. Um, they will get their first um, gold medal in anything. Okay. It was like won. We won, yeah, we won the uh, whole thing, and then to the point where the finals. Um, the coach, um, Sarazen, was there, and then I thought he was going to take over. He's like, no, you've been doing well, just because uh, the girls have eliminated. Yeah, yeah, keep going. I'll just, you got this. I'm not going to watch from here I'm just going to watch. Yeah. And he literally said no word, and just sitting down and watching me doing my thing. And that actually built my confidence. And then later on, I realized that, you know, when I was, like, covering for my the trainers, my mm -hmm. crews in, in classes and stuff, they, I just loved it. And then, so... We ended up opening MD Fit Life. MD is my initials, Mike Desir. Mm -hmm. Fit like, you know, uh, Fit Life is just like, I don't want to brand it as a martial art gym. It's a wellness yeah. center, it's a sanctuary where you come it's in. It's about fitness as but well. But you're going to make sure that yeah. you learn the proper techniques, proper um, the, the ethical stuff that yeah. you need 
too. So you can go anywhere around the world. I will make sure that you know what you're talking about when you are under my care, you know? Um, so that, that's that's how it is. That's serious. And faith is for freedom, innovation, because freedom, I really, that's my word to go, to, my go-to word. Freedom yeah, yeah. is my good word. So it's kind of like, I need to be free. People need to be free. <laughs> that comes down to your bloodline. Yeah, right? exactly. You know, like, pretty much. It's, it's, it's pretty much. Bloodline, you and know, innovation. Yeah, freedom, innovation, and then innovation. I, I, I'm very innovative. That's why I don't see myself as a Muay Thai coach, as a kickboxing coach. I know I am a striker, okay. and I keep like looking at people. So you won't put pressure. yourself in a box? No, never, 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 never. And then I still um, respect the fundamentals, and I respect the cultural aspect of things or tradition. But at the end of the day, you need to evolve, so you have to innovate. Um, so how do you stay up to date on finding techniques and I guess what you teach your clients lots out, of, right? Lots of training mm -hmm. and also to don't be shy to talk to people who are better than you at this and look that's, at different things. Different humble, humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. <laughs> you get, you, I'm not, humble <laughs> yourself. <laughs> that's it. I'm not, I'm not the best at, at it. I'm, not, I'm, I'm good at it. I'm, I'm not saying that to brag, but I'm very confident with what I've learned and what I'm passing on. And it shows in the competition we just won. But the thing is that at the end of the day, I don't know it all. And there are people who are way better than me doing this and I can learn a lot from. And, I like that. I like and that. that's one of the way to, you know, to improve yourself and keep training too, you know, listen to even to my students sometimes, Ben, our champion, Ben, mm -hmm. ben Askin, who's probably going to pop up at some point. Shout out Ben Askin, <laughs> you know, we were just at a table talking the other day and he was thinking about even like getting back into fighting, let yeah. alone going in a fight to win a belt. So he, he did, man. And, it, definitely, it, and, and in a very short time there. Very short like, time. Okay. Like, I mean, when you think about it, we just opened like last uh, January, mm -hmm. this location. Mm -hmm. I was teaching before, you remember that yeah, location, yeah, like yeah. renting space, but right now it's our own place. And then I was actually, I never wanted to have fighters. Ben is like, dude, you got to go the way you're coaching. Let's get it done. I'm okay. Like, so yeah. you didn't want to train fighters. No, because it's a whole different ball game. Like, uh, yeah, I thought you were already training fighters. Before. So I was training fighters before, but now I'm not going to corner you. Like, okay. I need to get you I'm ready. I'm not for showing it. up. Yeah, yeah. Man, you're ready. So okay. now it's just like, no, man, let's go with me. Like, I trust you. Let's go with me. I'm like, okay. So it's time consuming. And now I'm like, you know what? These guys have a dream. Why, why am I the one to stop, stop them? them. Stop Especially them from... when they want you as a yeah, coach. They're Mr. Coach. Miyagi. <laughs> <laughs> why is that? Why, is, why did you not want to train fighters? Is because it's, it's too time consuming it's for time your time consuming life, right? and uh, I really want to focus on family and yeah. then the gym here too. The the kind of clientele I, I, I bring. That was I my said, next question. Who do you serve? Who is so, your clientele? I don't want to have a meathead gym. I don't want to have a fighter gym. I want to have a sort of sanctuary where everyone is welcome. Because right now we have all sorts of people who come to me with all sorts of problems. Mm -hmm. And this outlet they're using has really been helping them. And when I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, I need to focus on that, on our community. But at the same time too, you know, when you have like, you know, you bring, you, you take further out than what you're doing right now. Expand, that's right? one of the things that Ben showed me, like you have to coach like fighters and look at different upper street. You have to find the balance, like yeah. Mr. Miyagi. Yeah, always exactly. talking about, find but the like, uh, to work with your so life right now, still I'm speaking, you know, I'm speaking with, uh, with my girl and we are um, in, a, in a state where we're trying to find that balance and we are trying to find that place where I can manage these things without burning myself out. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of things has changed in three, four, five months. Yeah. But like, uh, Every time I see you, it's a whole, whole <laughs> yeah. evolved. But you know? the fundamentals are, are, are clear. Are clear. clear. Yeah. It's just like, I have the people I need here. And it, but like, you know what, now I look, have to look further. I have to look at, okay, what's your personal goal? What's your personal goal? And then we take it from there and build. That's you beautiful. know, as long as we plan properly, I think uh, we can yeah, we can get, get to go. Things. Yes, absolutely. I like it. So we we were talking about their current new champion. Yeah. Is that the first champion you've taught? The very first one. Very first one. And to give him credit, he had like prior experience, so it mm -hmm. makes it much easier. But like, you know, we had to work through strategies, but like, uh, these are things that I like giving people their props, right? Like, I don't like to take credit much. Like, he works hard. Yeah. He's, uh, he works hard. He's a national Canadian um, kickboxing champion in the he super heavyweight category. And he he fought for that belt. It's not like it was not something that <laughs> it was, was not easy. given to him. <laughs> uh, yeah. From the time Benjamin mm -hmm. Askins, like, the, from the time he started, he comes here. Sometimes I'm not even here because I have my other stuff. I'm going, uh, I'm, I'm trying to work. And he knows that he comes in here almost every day train on his own hit the bags work on his cardio when we do our things you know but also you can start like the way i build fighters i know how to um, train them physically and mentally to to end up to a point where they 
might increase their speed and mostly their stamina. You can have all the techniques in the world. If you cannot last 10 seconds in a fight, it's no good. <laughs> that's no it's good, no right? Good for so you. we are going to, he come in and he does his work. He really, really works hard and it shows. Like he's in the finals, he fought a monster of a man. And it was a fight. It was a dog fight. <laughs> dog fight. But at the end of the day, the guy was slowing down at the end. Yeah, you know, Ben was a bit fatigued, but like he was like more aggressive than the guy at the end of the fight. And then you, when you look at all these things putting together, mm -hmm. it's more than worth it. And then you know what? Um, he's, he's, he's great. He's a good guy. How, how, um, what does that do for your gym to have a champ in the house? Is that help bring clients in because at the same time you're not really you training fighters <laughs> you know what I mean? so now the the whole vision has changed yeah, right? but yeah. at the same time too it's just like you don't want to let that consume you too much mm -hmm. but also you have to make sure that you know the exposure is there so like you uh, need to capitalize off of success course, right? as well if right? someone tell you they want this to lie. Yeah, like, you know, you would love that to happen. Yeah. Am I actively looking for that because of that? Mm -hmm. No, but like, you know, am I doing effort, making effort? Like, is it part of my marketing strategy? Mm -hmm. Of course, it's gonna be. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, he worked hard for it. It's yeah. not like a, we spend time, we travel, spend money, exactly. um, leave family behind. Mm -hmm. While he has, a, our champion has a, um, an insurance and financial company mm -hmm. that he's, he's, he's leading. He's also running he as well owns, there. right? Yeah. And then, so he has to leave all that with that with two itself. kids and a wife and then travel to Niagara Falls for, mm -hmm. for how long, driving there and go there and all these kind of things, right? So yeah. that has to be rewarded somehow mm -hmm. uh, for him, for me, for the gym and for anybody who was involved, the students and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. Ben, <laughs> introduce yourself. What's your name? Uh, my name is Ben Haskins. I uh, middle-aged man who's going through a middle-aged crisis so i uh, decided to go and start fighting again i guess <laughs> well said that's it right so we met not too long ago that's right we we're talking about you getting seriously back into fighting yeah you're still having a bit of hesitations but you sounded pretty focused on your goal yeah when we were talking about it fast forward now it's probably been not even 60 days and now you got the super heavyweight belt i do how does that feel uh pretty surreal um, From I our can... conversation at the table to now, did you think you would be here? Yes. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, I did. Um, I like that. I'm fairly confident in whatever I was going to be doing. Kind of uh, goes with the with the, with the territory. Yeah and, yeah, and being an old man and, and understand, you know, my realistic goals. And yeah, what they're supposed to be. Uh, I didn't realize it was going to be the dog fight that it was. That it was. Yeah. Let's talk about this dog fight. <laughs> sure. Uh, when we, when I first got in the ring, I was petrified. Uh, you know, a big, much bigger fellow than I thought originally, and he was, as we call it, uh, first team all body. Which you means know, what? Six, eight pack, he had big muscles okay. on him, very athletic man. Everywhere, like head to toe, like. Yeah. Okay. And I, again, I'm kind of looking at being like, oh boy. Hard to is, spot the weaknesses yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. And so when we first came out, and again, this is my second fight. Uh, the second first, fight got you the belt, or that weekend? Yeah, that the weekend. Second fight. Okay. second fight in the weekend, okay. yeah. So the so second already fight, pretty beat up a bit. Yeah, I'm a little sore, mm -hmm. but he came out and he had a much greater reach than me, um, and he punched me <laughs> <laughs> right in the face, right, right in the face, You're and right. uh, I I could feel the power, and I thought, oh wow, this is different. Okay. Um, and he was far more aggressive than your um, first opponent you had just faced. Yeah. Which was still a fight too. Which was still a fight yeah. too, and uh, he actually caught me in the ribs and I almost buckled my knees. I was like, oh boy, this is, I don't know if I want to be here. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is different. And I kind of had to start fighting back and, and halfway through the first round, I kind of realized, well, I'm here. I might as well just keep going. How do you keep your focus, your discipline while you're getting hit and you almost think you're, 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 you had enough there? Oh man, uh, I think I would have been probably more embarrassed if I went down. Yeah. If I'm being honest, I That's, don't think I wanted to be is embarrassed. Is that what you use as your fuel to stay up or? Yeah, I, I yeah. think. I think it was, I think at the end of the day, when I kind of look back on it, it was exactly what I wanted to have happen. Mm -hmm. um, and as we kind of progressed through the fight, after the first round, Mike basically looked at me and I was like, so we're in a fight. Mm -hmm. And he's <laughs> yeah. like, so uh, I, we need to figure this out. Don't brawl them. Okay. Um, but I absolutely needed to, uh, to feel like I could take some power back. Okay. okay. And then Do after it. I was able to kind of push him off me a little bit more, I was able to then control and, and turn it more into what the fight I wanted it to be. From the beginning? Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, it's funny. So I had, my nose was starting to bleed a little bit and I was getting punched and hit and I started to smile. And I started to really, I found that the real fight was going on. Okay. I, 
what was odd about it was I was really enjoying fighting. Did that surprise you at that it point? Did. It did. Yeah. I, I, I didn't it's realize. It's kind of a euphoria point you hit there. Yeah. You know, you talk about that runner's high when it, people are jogging. It really it was. Sounds like you hit your, your threshold, but you're like, okay. Exactly. And I kind of was like, you know what? I think I need this again. Hmm. And we finished the fight and we won. And I was, I was grateful to win. But I realized that I got exactly what I wanted from the hmm. fight, which was I put all this effort and all this work in. I have cut 25 pounds you know, over the last three, four months, and it's all, thanks to Mike, all thanks to Mike. Mm -hmm. And if I had just knocked two guys out and went home, that would have been fine and great, but I got to put Test. everything I had. Yeah, exactly. Into this, and I got your to, will, your everything was tested. Yeah, and I got to prove to myself that mm -hmm. I, I, could be, I could be tough enough to stand there and, and be scared, mm -hmm. but still kind of push through still it. Still persevere. And, yeah, and, yeah. Then, and whoop them. Which is really what fighting's about. It is. <laughs> yeah, and I can tell you, I got when I walked out of the ring, I was far more confident than I than I think I ever could have been. Mm. Um, coming home and having my two little girls kind of be mm. excited for me. Yeah. And, uh, my wife <laughs> understands it, but mm. kind of doesn't get it either. Yeah. At point. <laughs> She's like, "You're getting punched in the, the face. face. <laughs> Couldn't you just?" Why don't you take a bridge? Yeah, you know, golf. This like, is what you decided to do right yeah. now. Yeah. But like I said, a little bit midlife crisis, and I'm and I'm grateful Mike was there. Um, I will say, uh, between the first and second round, um, I I would have been in a lot more trouble if Mike wasn't. There. Mike, uh, I didn't realize how exceptional his of a, coaching of was. A corner coach, Mike Even was. Even though he's quite reluctant. To, he was right. To, to, yeah, he to was. Be a corner man, you know. <laughs> but uh, no, he uh, came through. He came through hard, and I, I don't think I could have. Like I said, I don't think I could have done this without my corner. It's and almost like where he should be, you know. Almost exactly mm -hmm. where he should be. But the thing about this gym, the reason why I'm here, I'm not a fighter, yeah. right? I'm, you know, I, I run a financial firm. I have mm -hmm. two little girls. I'm a dad. I'm a Canada dad. Right, like and as living a super this heavyweight champ, as a heavyweight champ, <laughs> better add that to your resume. Yeah, you know? well, but, the reason why yeah. I came to this gym mm -hmm. uh, was because Mike was building a community. That's what it was. Not a fight club. Not a fight club. Mm -hmm. um, you work hard today, so you're better than what you were yesterday. That's awesome. And that's what I really loved about it. And so you know, I may be champ and all that stuff and i'm gonna go collect more belts mm -hmm. i am i'm gonna whoop everybody i can <laughs> for the next look at the next two let's years go. until i turn let's 40 go. i just turned 38 let's so I, go the next two years let's go i'm gonna collect belts you know like uh j-lo collects rings and, <laughs> oh man i'm gonna go do it i was just about to ask how you feel about defending What's the uh, plan on defending the belt? It's you're not already a, telling me you're coming to snatch other people's belts. Yeah, yeah. man. If you got a belt and it's shiny, I'm gonna go take gonna it. Come take it. I'm gonna take it from anybody. Uh, uh, and I hope the gentleman that I fought uh, comes, come. comes find, finds me again. Yeah, he um, definitely learned a few things there. You're, I loved it. And again, he he, he shone light on your weaknesses, right? On he what did. you needed to work on. Yeah. That you probably weren't even looking at before. Or, That's it. You know. So and so I'm. You know, I've always told Mike I want the biggest, baddest dude I can. But the biggest thing at the end of the day with that is, you know, I can have all the confidence in the world, I can win all the belts in the world, but I still, you know, I still hit pads and I still work with the 50 year old mom. Okay. You know, and I, you yeah. know, who we talk about the kids going off to university and we're having a ball. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm still going to learn a ton from that as well. Mm. So that's the kind of community that we have. It's a good way to keep you grounded through yeah. all this violence. Exactly, <laughs> you know? right? Yeah, yeah. And the violence really is on me. Mm -hmm. And it's on Mike. It's not on the community. It's, yeah. it's about, so I'm very focused on making sure that a community gets built as well. It's not about winning, you know, winning yeah. fights and being a tough guy and having other tough guys in here. It's about building a community in here and, and being able to go out. And if I do win, and sorry, when I, I do win, win. There you go. Um, Manifest, baby. That's it. So when I do win, it shines a lot of light on the gym, and that's mm. really the goal. So win-win on all sides. Exactly. Man, thanks for taking the chance of to course, set, sit down, chop it up. Yes. Let us know how it feels to be a champion. Good. And a Canada dad, you know? And a Canada dad. <laughs> Beautiful. That's right. All right, man. Nice. You know? Yeah. So do you remember your first fight? 
Yeah. Whether, whether professionally or on the streets, or is there a different... First, answer? first fight was in Haiti in the street. Yeah. Uh, second one was a Taekwondo. When you were like a child there? So yeah, I was a child. Yeah. Like, I think I beat the guy. Was too, that something. before you started learning Taekwondo or after? I was in Taekwondo at that time. Then. Okay. Yeah. I think I beat the guy or something. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do some technique. I went full Asian on him. Yeah. Full <laughs> 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 uh, but my first, let's say, uh, Taekwondo competition, I got a couple um, done. I did want a gold medal in Taekwondo, uh, which I lost in the fire I had at my house back home. Okay. And then, um, kid stuff, but yeah. it was good. Um, and then my first fight here actually was a smoker to bar, you know, in yeah. house. And I couldn't perform. I lost, like, I lost it because I couldn't perform. That you know, the guy kudos to him, he came and fight. Okay. But I was so stressed and so um, nervous or what? Nervous, and I just, I was just, I froze. Is that from the from people watching? And was it too big? I, I was no. What I was, do you think got you nervous? I, still now I can't yeah. even picture this out and one thing I knew at that time I said to myself I will never lose a fight again I will bite like yeah. Mike Tyson if I have to I'm not <laughs> I'm losing ever so the <laughs> thing is uh, wow. and, and then uh, yeah and that was my first fight it was it, didn't feel, it was a weird feeling and then kudos to one of my trainers like he really get me rid of that jizz that I have like you know yeah. um, the Those way that opening he treated jitters. yeah um, did you ever think of going to fight now would you ever fight again now or these thoughts come you know, up and down up sometimes and down, you yeah, get close yeah, and then you shut it off sometimes you want to but like right now i made my uh so it's still alive in you then. no i i, so I, I gotta it's still alive <laughs> you know i gotta focus yeah. on the family and yeah. uh and I, I really need to focus on the community because i have bigger plan like you see the gym and then we have the smoothie bar we're opening up mm -hmm. front um let's and talk I, about the smoothie bar actually yeah. so Where, you know, how did that come about because I know that in our culture, me and you, our Haitian culture, we have a lot of a lot of great um, super fruits that are not being um, used, tackled, appropriately, used yeah. appropriately here or anywhere around the world. And we are rich in resources like that, but like they're not being spread. So what I decided to do, I'm gonna I open a I'm opening a tropical smoothie bar where we're gonna focus a lot on these Caribbean smoothies like um, sourza, papaya, guava, passion fruit. Okay. Um, Acai from Brazil too is another super fruit that uh, super food that's really beneficial for our health and things like that. So because of that, I didn't want to go to the route of like people, those, those typical ones you see here. I want to go to, to the place where we bring our culture um, here, a place where people can actually benefit from the taste and also for the health benefit. Okay, yeah. I like that, especially yeah. that so many of us suffer from high blood pressure and diabetes. Yeah. And yeah. Smoothies are always a better way to go with Absolutely. fried foods. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but as a disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. I mean, I'm not promising healing That's to, it. to you're just anybody. Cutting, yeah. so you're I'm just promising you, good, good, yeah, good stuff. Smoothies, and then, you know, if it has the health benefit, home, you, know? I, you can yeah. read on Google. Yeah. But like at the <laughs> yeah. end of the day, exactly. like, you know, I've, I've lived through them and see how to reduce my own blood pressure yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're offering more of like a tropical, good tasting food. Yes, enough. absolutely. You're not here to cover health benefits. <laughs> Oh, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so I know you've been in a lot of fights yourself, professionally and unprofessionally. <laughs> <laughs> mostly unprofessionally. You know, mostly yeah. unprofessionally. Yeah, I got it. Have you ever been injured? Did you ever break a bone or? Thank God, no. That no. never happened. Did but, anything uh, ever put you out for a while? Yes, um, I was kicking a bag, uh, one of the bags, and then it was one that... <laughs> <laughs> Would you have breaks in there or what? No, it's not because they just refilled it. So like the, everything fresh. was fresh. Yeah. And I was like actually getting ready for a fight. Um, and then in, in auto and then after that, I went and kicked the... It seems like I kicked a concrete wall. Okay. Like it concrete wall. It was bad. And I'm like, but that's the most I've had in a fight. Okay. Um, I got as I got knocked down. I got knocked down in actually in training. It wasn't like a, it was to, to a liver shot, and I was like, "Oh, I don't want to feel that ever again in my life." Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but big injury like this, thank God, I'm very grateful that never Still happened. Good. Um, <laughs> yeah, get a couple of cuts here and there. It's mostly inspiring too. It was never in a, anything major. Nothing major. Yeah. So, what kind of services do you offer here? Like, if someone's looking at your gym, yeah. Like, what do you offer to the, the client, your clientele? Absolutely. So um, here we we offered when it comes to the fitness aspect, we have we have our um, Muay Thai, kickboxing, boxing, and fitness classes. Okay. Um, we open Monday to Thursday to uh, sorry Monday to Saturday and keep the Sunday off. And the full schedule is on our website mdfitlife.com. And uh, beside that, we are fixing the back room here for the sauna and infrared sauna. And okay. then also we're gonna have a cold plunge um, as well service. Um, <coughs> 
up, up front we open our tropical smoothie bar like it's actually been uh, we've been working on it and it's the official launch of it is going to be this coming wednesday so two days from now okay so uh okay, that's we, coming up. last saturday we had like a tasting people love the quality of the one one smoothie i brought out that day and they enjoyed it and yeah that's pretty much it for now and then um yeah, and then we'll see later on, you know, as we grow, what we can add. Because I have big visions for this place. So yeah. we'll take it one day at a time. Well, one well, service at a time. One service at a time. Yeah. So we got the cold plunge coming, the spa, the smoothie, all included in this fitness package that you're going in. It's like a one-stop shop. A one-stop shop. So I guess the cold plunge and the sauna will definitely help soothe, soothe those muscles <laughs> after, Absolutely, after right. a hard day hitting the bag, right? Absolutely. Like there are, there are so many good health benefits on the, on those uh, two tanks and um, I, I, I'm eager to bring it to the people and then uh, so they can use the service because it's really, really, I am really want to create a sanctuary, not a fight gym, not a you know, yeah. rough place to be, like to, to look like, you know, you're the best. No, I just want you to come to a place where you can like like release whatever tension and then like feel good after yeah, right feel that, confident walking feel confident. up exactly so where do you see md fit life five years from now you five years franchise from now. out or would you like different locations or focus on one and grow more services what do you have in mind within five years i could see myself having one um two one or two more locations mm -hmm. um, and i don't want to grow too too fast the reason is i really want to create a proper foundation and so the quality Focus uh, on the service, the service, yeah. and then like grow, and then different around different places in the city. At least having one and or two more will be ideally for five years from now, right? So yeah. that's where we, we see ourselves. That's perfect. Yeah. And what's your favorite alternate song? Hmm. Let's go. 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 Let's and this this was a carnival song and uh, i don't know for some odd reason this song just like powers you up it just like powers me up because i remember where i was doing how how much of a hot head i was when this thing came out yeah. so, <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. so it was like uh it was a nice carnival back then yeah <laughs> that's how you get hype yeah that's crazy yeah. that's a good answer yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. That's one more question if you could fight anyone dead or alive just like your spine who would you fight? <laughs> Dead or alive? Yeah, from any generation. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. Uh, I will say Mayoga. Mayoga is a boxer. Like he was just like ruthless. Yeah. Yeah. I will say that. Um, I will say Mayoga in boxing. Ah, uh, Muay Thai. I would say a man named, I actually have dream to train with him. His name's Samart. Like, he's like one of the best technicians um, in Muay Thai. Where is he? Uh, he's in Thailand. Thailand? He has a, yeah, he's, he's, he's solid. And then, I don't know, I'm inspired, inspired with Mike Tyson. Will feel <laughs> <laughs> I no, figured, you know, it, feels, it will feel good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it will feel good, but yeah. it will be an experience. I should experience say. Experience and a half <laughs> there, you know? Oh, they will. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, I would think, uh, you know, mm. I would hope for Tyson. Yeah. I am looking at him training. It's still, he still, still looks, got it. still got it. But at the end of the day, the man is almost 60. Let's uh, be real. And let's be real. And Jake Paul, honestly, man, he's, he's, he's doing his work. He's, he's working hard. He's, work. he's legit. Like he's been putting, he's putting his work. I can't hate on the guy, but mm. I'm rooting for Tyson anyway. We share That's the same it. first name, so why not? <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Um, while we're on that subject, yeah. growing up, did you ever idolize fighters? Like, you mentioned a few right now. Um, Who did you look up to? You know, like? when we were growing up, right? Bruce Lee, Van Damme, Van Damme exactly. is my guy. Like, Chuck exactly. Norris, like, all these yeah, kind of yeah. things. <laughs> of course, like, you know, I wouldn't say idolizing, but, like, you know, you look up to these guys. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, when I first got into martial arts, because I was looking at Van Damme. When I, was, when I first saw Double Impact, I was like, yo, blood mm. sport. And I'm like, yo, yeah, can I do this? <laughs> Blood sport. Yeah. I like to end my interviews with the slogan on the Haitian flag, which is Union Fera Force. Yeah. Which we've lived by pretty much our whole lives, what I can hear you live by as well. But what does Union Fera Force mean to you? Union Fera Force, uh, no man is an island, you know. Mm, I uh, like that. When you are in unity, when you are united, there are so many things, uh, you know, the burden gets less mm. and the possibilities get more. I like become that. more so to me l'union fait la force mean it's a code of life for me not only you know mm. it's not just la patrie yeah. it's just like it's a code of life, life you know? wherever you are it gives you uh, a chance also to learn how to accept 
you know others in a way not not to be influenced by negativity but also to to accept the help to put our help together to respect um, the others strengths even weaknesses sometimes so it's just like it's it's the, the level of unity that comes with that slogan to me mm. means the world to me and believe building this place was not easy many places many times last year when i was like when i got the key i wanted to give up literally walk out and then somebody come in and you know give you that little boost you wanted at oh that God, time. Back in um, you. even Let's a guy like back. ben and isaiah these guys mm -hmm. like even me when i when i'm like okay i need to do certain things hey man i got you um let's uh let me let me teach that class for you you can go take care of your thing and i'm like wow you know mm -hmm. when you look at that unity that that when you're united yeah. to me it's literally a code of like now we have issues you know we're trusting and things like that but at yeah. the end of the day that's why you know you check your environment you make sure that you know it's a solid environment so we can build a good foundation for that and go far yeah <laughs> Good answer. Exactly. Good answer. Thank you, boss. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to sit with us. Thank introduce you. Introduce MD Fit for Life for us. Yeah. Introduce us to Ben. You know, <laughs> we got a champ in the house. The champ is here. It's been a pleasure. UFLF 1804 episodes. We out, baby. Thank you. Thank you.